What's up, everybody? Jensen here. Thank you for tuning in. Second show of the day today, June 4th. That's a Thursday, June 4th. And we got Robert Bogatin. I said your name wrong. Robert. That's all right. It's a Bogatin. Unbelievable. People, it's my job to pronounce people's names right, and I can't even fucking do that. Robert Bogatin. Bogatin. Yeah, it's an uncommon one, so that's all right. I'm, I'm embarrassed because my name's Jensen. People fuck it up all the time, and I just did that to you. So now at least we have some drama to start this episode. This will be right. exciting for people. Yeah. They're like, wow, this got awkward really quick. It can only <laughs> get better from here, which I, I appreciate. That's why we're live every single day. So for you, re resilientrestaurants.org is what we're going to be talking about, really supporting kind of the future and resilience of restaurants, and we're going to talk about exactly what that is. Cliffhanger. I want to start, though, a little origin story. Give us some background so we can kind of understand why a project like this would end up being important for a guy like you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, I've, I've certainly had a colorful uh, background in my life. And uh, several years ago when uh, we sold our last restaurant, um, I, I, yeah, I honestly didn't really see myself getting back into the food and beverage industry. Um, it wasn't on the wasn't on the plan, but the opportunity presented itself, and my background uh, really can contribute to launching this program. I feel like I'm a great fit for it, and I really enjoy the team that I'm working with. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been an well, interesting. Take us, take us all the way back. You're from Philly originally. Like set the table yeah. for people. Philly, the family's been in kind of the business. We you and I rapped about that a little bit, being kind of a yeah. restaurant kid myself. Because I think it's important for people to know, like, you give a really shit about cool. restaurants, like truly in your yeah. DNA. So take people all the way back to Philly. Sure. Take the picture. Uh, yeah, well, originally born and raised in West Philly and, uh, um, you know, had had a very different experience growing up there. My parents split up when I was seven and uh, my mom moved us out to Colorado. And uh, so from seven on, I've lived my life partially in Philly and partially in Colorado. And so I've had, you know, back then Colorado was a really different place. I've seen our population, I think, triple in, in my lifetime. Um, so I've seen a lot of growth. Um, so, f you know, the perspective that we bring to our passions and our projects is, is absolutely key. And so mine is very colored by the, the urban and kind of the suburban sprawl uh, you know, experiences that I've had, um, in my family, uh, you know, there's actually some, some petrochemical business activity mm -hmm. in at the grandparents level. And I was kind of being groomed for that business. I could have entered the petrochemical industry. Um, and also growing up in West Philly around violence and, and the racism and all kinds of other aspects um, it, my early life was painted in a sense where I found myself by experiencing all these things that I wasn't. And so my, my early life is basically me figuring out who I am by being exposed to all these things where I'm like, that doesn't feel right. That doesn't look right. I don't want to do that. I'm not that person. And so I found myself kind of in my own, I had to set out on a path and expose myself to other influences and to try to find other communities, mentors. I started, you know, just reading books and trying to learn about other cultures and other ways of living uh, and from an early age. And that just set me down that road. Um, and from when I was a young kid, I've always been a systemic thinker and I have a, you know, an empathic kind of sensitivity, emotional quotient. Um, yeah. And I have an awareness of sustainability and I see big systems and I see patterns, but I have this kind of workaholic business mind that loves to drill down the details and loves to spell out everything and know how everything works. So I've always been kind of juggling big vision ideas and understanding big systems. Yeah. And then getting down into it and figuring out how does this work? How do we make this, you know, really efficient and effective? So, 
yeah. Um, yeah, it makes sense to me. Kind of you have that high low thinking where you're really connecting the dots. I think that's an important process. Sometimes there is a disconnect between that. It's like the people in the restaurant, in the trenches, like making it happen. And then the people just thinking high level, it's like, how do you integrate that? And so I like that. That thinking feels very much like just from our conversations, just from seeing and scratching the surface of what Good Business Colorado and ResilientRestaurants.org is working on. So let's now, let's get very practical and tell yeah. people exactly what it is because, it, you know, Good Business and Resilient Restaurant could be a, a magnitude order of things. Like, let's give it simple. Let's get granular. What is it? And then let's unpack kind of how it goes about, who it's serving, but what what the hell is Resilient Restaurants? Yeah, well, most simply, Resilient Restaurants is a new statewide nonprofit program, and we're operating under the Good Business Colorado uh, nonprofit organization. Um, originally, the ideation for this project happened late last year, and okay. I was actually in the middle of my interview process uh, I was really excited when I saw the post for, hey, we're looking for a director to launch a statewide program for the food and service, uh, food service industry. Um, and right in the middle of the pandemic hit. And then literally in my final interviews, it was, well, we appreciated the strategic plan that you wrote in the first round, but it's very different now. So what do you want to do? And it was, you know, largely through my vision and strategic plan that I submitted for what I think can really benefit Colorado right now, which is how I, you know, got the position. So um, as an active program in Good Business Colorado, I've adopted their three pillars, uh, which is basically an integrated bottom line approach. Um, you have economic prosperity and environmental sustainability and equitable communities. So we're really addressing uh, the, the business case for uh, encouraging and implementing better practices, and then providing as many opportunities and support to engage and implement these practices that, you know, social the social equity pieces, investing in human capital, changing the working conditions, uh, not just by raising worker conditions and livable wages and better benefits for food service workers, but talking about the systemic problem which, you know, we're addressing that by saying, look, our workers need better conditions. We need to increase the professionalism, the full time reliability. We need to reduce turnover. You know, all these have direct business bottom line implications. But because of our, you know, just like uh, many other restaurateurs will say, they might not even set out to necessarily achieve this great social capital. Uh, achievement in their business, but when they did something and they realized there was a profitable return and it impacted their business on many levels, those are, you know, we want high leverage opportunities. And now is such an important time for people to be able to plug into high leverage opportunities that they can implement these better practices now and their business, their community, and their workforce are going to benefit as a result. So, yeah. Let me take the let me take the the position of a, a restaurant tour. Like everything you're saying sounds really good, right. and I believe it. We have a lot of similar vocabulary. Sounds really good. Sounds amazing. How the hell do I do that when my job, my role in my business is to make a tactile product? I'm making food and drinks, and everything that you're saying sounds like amazing. But I don't know how I actually do that. So. What is the what is the service specifically or how is a restaurant actually getting the benefit potentially from the work that's happening? Is it a consulting service? Sure. Is it a manual? Like what is the actual tactile thing, knowing that our people are very much wanting to touch something with their hands for it to be real? Absolutely. Um, yeah. So moving beyond all the, you know, the philosophy and the ethos. Uh, and the principles were obviously I've written a two page charter, which is a living document and kind of outlines the principles of what we're doing. But this is all about field work and making change very tangible and accessible to everyone now. So we will all operate like a community resource and working group. So there will be active member engagement, a strong peer to peer support network that we will be able to introduce businesses that 
are interested but not as experienced in some of these practices, they will have direct access and training opportunities from Colorado businesses who have used these models for years. And sure. our first webinar in a couple of weeks will be a face-to-face, side-by-side comparison of actual Colorado businesses using different compensation models. And here's their profit and loss statements. And here's what your books can look like if you institute this kind of model. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a restaurant. I'm thinking uh, Kayvon Kalibari. He's doing, you know, employee owned. I'm thinking about that model. This might be a place that I could look. I'm looking at Resilient Restaurants, Good Mrs. Colorado, and I right. might be able to find resources or information or case studies that will tell me exactly how to accomplish that. Or I'm right. thinking about open book management. I'm thinking about uh, equal pay. I'm thinking about taking tipping out of the scenario and spreading that across my entire staff. These are the kind of real world opportunities and challenges that restaurants are facing that you are trying to solve for and create resources, peer to peer information sharing. That is what I could get out of being a part of this group, correct? Yeah, that'll be the main benefit of our outreach programs where we're working with webinars and with face-to-face workshops working at restaurant, uh, our, our, rest, our workshop model, excuse me, is actually uh, hosted at a, a member venue restaurant. And so they will be a main participant in the training, but other proprietors and managers will be there to give them input and learn from what they're doing at the same time. Um, so there'll be a lot of face-to-face uh, activity. Personally, I do find myself in a little bit of a mild advisory role um we're not we're not necessarily hireable as a consultancy that's not part of our model but from a personal support standpoint and our staff we will answer questions and requests for support for every individual member and try to connect them to something that's going to work and i've obviously been able to talk to restaurateurs um, over the last few weeks and really just give them some verbal support and let them know they're not alone especially the, the mountain towns and rural communities who don't have a peer group that they can really lean on and certainly not a lot of other peers which are experimenting with different business models. So Yeah. And so I'm paying a, a membership fee to be a part of a group that has access to resources. It's free. To bring up challenges. It's free. It's free for uh, establishment establishments. Okay. Uh, it, right now it's free for everybody down the road it may be free for trade associations and for-profit companies that sell to the food and beverage industry but the food and beverage establishments themselves as our model will always be free that's great i like what you're saying so let's talk about you you mentioned some of the underserved the mountain towns rural communities who are we serving here who is our focus our target demographic who and how are we going about yeah. supporting restaurants and kind of the model that you've laid out. Sure. Well, I'm proud to be a part of the Good Business Colorado community. And it's no surprise that we stand for and advocate and support small businesses uh, so that they can have a uh, greater opportunity to stay competitive and have their voice heard. And so obviously, um, if you're not familiar with the demographics of GBC, we're strong supporters for uh, immigrant owned businesses, women-owned businesses, and uh, other populations that uh, necessarily don't have a strong representative voice, both in the business community and on on the legislative side. So we do have our kind of core base, and those are hardcore values-driven business owners who believe in the principles of what we're doing, and they will be the early adopters. They've already been the early adopters for years. And these are our mentors. These are who we're going to work with to help train up everybody else. But this is not about preaching to the choir. This is about systemic change across an industry. And it's going to take a lot larger buy-in. And I'm a very inclusive, collaborative person. I may have my own personal political beliefs and other visions of what I think the food industry can be. For example, Mm -hmm. I personally also believe tipping should just go away and that we can find a much better model than that. But it's going to take some time for us to get there. And more importantly, my own personal opinion doesn't always matter when we're representing 
12,000 plus establishments in the state of Colorado. So my priority is to give immediate benefit and opportunity to our core members and early adopters, but with the strongest intention to adapt and present these business models and these practices to conventional and traditional business owners so that we can actually shift everything so that people can understand your bottom line will benefit from these integrated bottom line practices. Um, and there's a lot to respond to, particularly now with the pandemic, even, yeah. even in the waste of the personal protection equipment and, you know, the billions of, of gloves that we're going to go through now and styrofoam to go containers and single serving menus and single serving utensil packs. And, you know, so we understand that everybody first and foremost needs to reopen and be there for their employees, for their community and to stay safe and healthy. But now is not the time to forget how and why it's important to address waste, food, the, the plastic and the unnecessary disposables, the absolutely horrendous food waste that's generally yeah. found in the food industry. Um, consumer perceptions of the cost of creating a healthy, locally supplied, you know, prepared meal. Um, talking about soil health and farmers and producers, talking to trade associations and our professional service providers. We need to create more circular systems, open lines of communication where we're not competing with each other. We are collaborating with each other and we're raising the entire industry at the same time. Yeah, um, I'm, we will all profit I'm, from that. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a buyer in the way that the collaboration is formed, the way that there's infrastructure around communication and then, you know, allowing the conversation there and to be nuanced because what's going to serve Denver versus Grand Junction versus Colorado Springs. There's so much individual challenges and opportunities within that. So I, I can appreciate that. And so we, this yeah. is actually, this is a selfish question. I'm going to give you a selfish question because you and I have talked about the Paragon pillars a little bit and people that watch the show have heard about it and they're going to hear more and more, right? Our, our goals of two pillars, net 20% profit for a single unit operation and 75% employee retention satisfaction, which seem completely unattainable when you think about the status quo as it is today. But we believe that if you create an understanding at every single level of what it takes and create partners versus vendors, things like that, and employees, but you actually are creating an equitable, profitable, sustainable model, right? So that's how we first connected. It's such a big idea. It has so many layers with so many stakeholders who have completely different motivations, incentives, and drive, all of those things. How then of, of what you've laid out, what we're kind of working on, the ways that we're overlapping, how the hell do you stay focused or know exactly where the effort is needed in any moment when you're talking about PPE, you're talking about single use menus, you're talking about delivery apps, you're talking about social distancing, you're talking about physical barriers, all these different things. From an right. organizational standpoint, how are you keeping that organized? Make sure that the, your output is actually the most valuable thing for who you serve at any given time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, two main points, I think, guide that. The first and most important thing is obviously getting as much feedback right now from people as possible. Our statewide survey is how we're immediately addressing that. And we can. Yeah. And real quick, how do people get to that while we're there? How do people get to that? I'll have Sophie can link that up. Yeah. The best uh, direct route would go to resilientrestaurants.org. And you'll, in a few seconds, you'll see a pop up for it. And it's on the home page. And it has a whole page on there. You can take it right on our website. If you want to take it in Spanish um, or take it directly on Survey Gizmo, there's a link to do that. Great. All right. So back to kind of the organizational model that you're trying to, to serve. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, that direct feedback is key. That's kind of self-explanatory. Um, and how I've been balancing that as well is creating like online is the best place where I can curate some materials, reading materials, case studies, white papers, graphics and infographics and reports, just so people can start to look at, here's the kind of content we're going to be presenting. Here's exactly. some information about regenerative models. Here's some information about food waste in, in nationally. 
Uh, here's some social equity toolkits that you can pull in right now and do a little training with your staff. So I've done a lot of curation of go to on your at your own speed and integrate at your own will uh, some resources where people can start to get their feet wet and use some easily implementable practices. Um, in terms of real response and our outreach programs with the webinars and workshops, I'm getting direct feedback and, and the collaborative organizations like yourself, uh, certain topics are rising to the top of what we really need to address. And partners are coming to the table saying, yeah, I'm working on that. I already have this piece of it. Let's let's put that off. Let, let's put this together and we can do something in two, three weeks. Um, I'm direct drawing... feedback. Let's talk about that. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a restaurant owner watching. I have a, a food company, I'm a farmer, I'm a rancher, whoever is part of the ecosystem of this audience specifically. What do I What do? I do? Am I going to that website? Am I emailing you? What does direct feedback mean? How do I like give you the information that's top of mind for me? Like, give okay. us an idea of how, how people can actually get involved uh, yeah. now, right now. If, if you are a restaurant, bar, brewery, or distillery, or a cafe, taking our statewide survey is absolutely the best platform right for you to plug into okay uh, one note about that because it's not just a survey for our group and it's not just an industry report we are able to share with people that is officially pre-screened and approved by the colorado department of public health and education and environment uh to be used uh potentially at the state regional and local level so, so that that data will be used as we implement as they implement their relief and recovery programs um, and when you say implement, what's your hope as how they will, will adopt the potential data that is mined from this process? We're mapping the whole industry before and after the pandemic. So we are creating the most accurate, uh, comprehensive mapping of the industry so that we have that benchmark and baseline data so that we know where we were in the fourth quarter last year and how everything has shifted from now and then moving over the next few years transparency and the ability to track progress is key nobody is addressing the whole industry to say where are we we need to know exactly what the picture is so that we know how we're moving forward what's working what isn't working so the survey captures important data that's going to help us know the size and general business models in place at restaurants and these uh, establishments around the state the differences between the urban and rural communities um, and uh, it, it's really effective. It takes less than 10 minutes to take, but it's a really effective survey. And just, uh, you kind of mentioned a little bit, but give us a little idea, like what are the type of questions that uh, you'd be asking of, of my restaurant, just to give people a little bit yeah, of Yeah, the first half, uh, you know, the first 15 questions is basic business operational questions. How many locations do you have? What's your range of revenue? How many front of house and back of house employees do you have? What's your compensation model? Um, basic, basic stuff. And then the second part is all pandemic. When were you impacted? What happened? Did you get PPP funding or idle funding? Did you use it? Did your employees, you know, receive unemployment insurance? Did you hire them back? You know, those types of things. Gotcha. Okay. Well, so that's at the end, that's there, there are the open-ended questions. The last two questions are, how are you know what do you need to share with us about recovering right now and what do you need from us the most and we okay. will have real people reading every answer because it's largely multiple choice so we'll be able to crunch the data easily on those but we're going to have people reading those answers and and reaching back out to you so um, this will be a, an ongoing forever kind of project because the industry will be evolving and it's always evolving and probably has needed to evolve quite a bit. It really, really is the worst possible way that this could happen because of a pandemic. But you're, we're basically accelerating a lot of things five years because of this scenario in all industries, this industry very much so. Right. However, let's, let's think about this just practically from the timeline. So people will be able to get involved in perpetuity, it's going to continue to happen. However, the survey what's closes. the urgency right now to get data so that you can take the next steps? How long are you hoping to run this set of surveys to give yep. people a little bit of understanding of when they need to get connected? Yeah, uh, we'll probably wrap up this survey by the end of June. Okay. Uh, we don't have a set date just because of 
all the distractions happening right now, other issues that are being dealt with. Um, so we have another three weeks or so to take the survey. Then we'll probably do another one months from now, maybe at the end of the year or at the beginning of next year. Uh, not yet. Yeah, it's, it's not about over surveying people, but this one sets the baseline for everything moving forward. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But people who want to get involved, uh, you know, membership is free. You can reach out to me directly. You can connect to the larger GBC community. If you're not in food and beverage, but you want to support resilient restaurants, there's still room for you to do that. Um, How does somebody reach out to you directly? Uh, Robert at goodbusinessco.org uh, on the website. My phone number and email are readily available. My number is 303-241-8082. He's, he's there. Oh, literally, whoa, Robert is the guy for sure. My schedule so, is open until 7.30 every night. So <laughs> 7.30 Mountain Time, people. Be respectful, uh, but engage for sure. All right. Uh, parting thoughts. Any last little bit as we kind of wrap this up that you want to leave us with? Uh, you know, I guess I just want to leave a little note of inspiration for people and let them feel my excitement. I've been doing a lot of field work. My Rolodex has quadrupled in the last few weeks. Sure. There is a lot of interest in people knowing that intense local collaboration is going to change all of our small business industries and our communities to bounce back from this situation. And we're dealing with a lot of heavy things right now, but I just want to leave with that positive we are actually addressing this and there are people who want to make a difference right now as, as, as we've seen. And so, yeah, thank you so much for being a part of it. And I can't wait till the Phoenix project and, and uh, what we're working on can, can continue to develop. So, yeah, I, I can't speak for anybody else, but myself yet. I am very motivated to kind of see where, what we're doing best served as far as this platform goes can be of service as well as behind the scenes, the work that we're doing on developing the Paragon Pillars and getting the level of communication and information and collaboration kind of into that ecosystem, I think is gonna be important. And the work that myself, Andrew Parr, Sophie Breaker, our whole team is doing is going to be invaluable, I know, because the intent is so strong to make a difference for the restaurant community. It's very important. So I, I appreciate the work that you're doing, Robert. Thank and you. I know we're gonna have a lot more conversations, but I'm glad we got to sneak this episode in because I wanted to get you on quickly so we could talk about this and Thank we're gonna have a lot right. more to talk about. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I right, appreciate you. Have, Robert, a, great have a great day. Cheers. Thanks, buddy. All right. Links in the comments. I I'm sure Sophie is all over it and the next three weeks. So we really call to action, you know, because timing on this one is of the utmost. We want to get as much information from the restaurant community all over the state of Colorado into this survey system to find out what opportunities and challenges there are and see how there is a chance to navigate those. You know, we feel honored to be any little part of anything that'll have a positive impact on the humans working in hospitality. That's my goal, our unsung hospitality heroes. And if we can empower businesses to be stewards for those team members, those partners, those humans, then I think it, it's worthwhile to me. So get in there, share this please with anybody working uh, at the uh, ownership decision-maker level in restaurants so we can get some of that information knowing the size and scope and financials and whatever else the survey is, is really trying to pull from us. I think it's going to be important because we do need to have a holistic understanding of where the hell we're at and try to find a way forward. So definitely check that out. All right. Great. Two episodes today, both kind of thematically thinking about the business model, the opportunities therein. So thank you to Kayvon Kalatbadi and Robert Bogatan for being a part of the show. I really appreciate it. All right, tomorrow, Bogatin. Seriously, Jensen, the worst. You guys, I'm the worst host in the history. Robert Bogatin. Come on. Gotta get, I gotta get people's names right, at least. I can't be expected for anybody to pay attention to the show if I can't do that. 
Uh, tomorrow's episode, noon mountain time, Matthew Horky will be on. He's from Exotic Wine Travel out in Singapore. I'm just interested in what's happening in the wine world as a whole. Also the travel world. I want to get back out there and travel and go to restaurants and have wine. So I know that that is where his pulse is because tourism and travel and experience is so important. So we're going to check in with him and uh, maybe he'll introduce us to some new wine. All right, everybody.